Yo, Hydro Pump is like the most broken move ever in Pokemon Quest. I mean, look at this. We're at the last stage of the game, the final boss, and Hydro Pump just mows everything down. We just one-shot everything with Hydro Pump because it's so powerful. Like, that that's just absolutely insane. So, obviously, it has to be the best move in the game, right? Well, whenever there's a meta, there's an anti-meta. Whenever there's an establishment, there is the anti-establishment. That, you know, people just aren't good accepting with what is the best. So now, with the Hydro Pump, there's the response of anti-Hydro Pump in the form of Vine Whip. Yes, Vine Whip is seeming to be the either the best or the second best move in Pokemon, even though it really doesn't seem like it would make any sense, especially in Pokemon Quest. Like, okay, we think about competitive Pokemon, Hydro Pump actually sees competitive play because it is the strongest non-signature water type move, but Vine Whip doesn't see any use ever because it's fairly weak. Well, as we can see right here, the way Pokemon Quest handles moves is going to be differently. Vine Whip has actually a really high base power and a good AoE. That AoE moves are king in this game, and what makes Hydro Pump so broken is not the power, but that each individual instance of Hydro Pump doesn't get diminishing damage for, like any other move. Like if you use Psychic, if you use a Beam move, it's going to do an instance of damage, but then it does 50% less for every time it's used. Not Hydro Pump, therefore it packs the highest damage. But let's see how broken Vine Whip is in response. So now let's actually take a look at Vine Whip to see what makes it so powerful and also the Pokemon that get access to it. Well, unfortunately, it's actually a very limited move pool inside this game. It's pretty much just going to be the Bulbasaur evolutionary line and the Bellsprout evolutionary line, but the Bulbasaur evolutionary line doesn't have a lot of power. It's built to be really tanky, so 550 on that base hit points, but 150 on the base attack. And the bonuses, they're going to be all right. Like, actually, Bulbasaur is stronger than Venusaur because the attack of Grass-type moves plus 20% compared to the attack of Grass-type moves plus 10%. You're going to be getting way more than just the extra 75 base attack so if you get like a really good Bulbasaur that's actually perfect as we're going to describe later in this video for being able to use Vine Whip just hold on to that if, as long as it has the uh, plus 20% because and it's going to be more damage in the long run now when it comes to learning Vine Whip this is actually one of the major strengths of the move because as a Pokemon evolves so this is going to be the uh, Bulbasaur right here so Vine Whip is actually one of the moves that you can just straight up get it and already know Vine Whip which is going to be really nice but as it evolves into Venusaur or as any Pokemon evolves it's going to have a lot more moves which means it can take a lot longer to get access to the Vine Whip. And then Victory Bell has slightly more moves, but it's actually not too bad. For Hydro Pump, you have to either evolve Psyduck into Golduck or Staryu into Starmie, and that's going to be, you know, give you a chance of just not getting the correct moves. And then we can go and look at these stats for the Victory Bell. I mean, plus 500 base attack, so already dealing with a lot more attack, but then attack of grass moves 5%, 10%, 10%. So we get a 25% buff to grass moves on top of that, but unfortunately, we need to get one move. So it can only be Vine Whip, you need three move slots for it. Uh, potentially IVs if you're looking for that. Also, I strongly recommend having eight offense on this and then one defense, that way you don't get one shot by everything, even under the bulk up. And then you also have to go for it. So it's a maximum insane RNG Pokemon. But at the same time, this can be beneficial, because you can miss one or two rerolls, but still have a pretty powerful Pokemon. Like, you can get Attack of Grass plus 5, plus 10, that's still going to be really nice compared to trying to just, like, land everything on the Starmie. So even getting one of these in decent odds is going to be good, or you get two, or you get all three, and it's going to be very powerful from there. Uh, Weeping Bell, actually stronger, so much, much again, like, the 150 extra attack that you get by evolving into Victory Bell, that's offset by the plus 10%. That we're getting on having the attack of grass type 15 15 5 so your rerolls are going to look pretty good and then it also still carries over on the uh bell sprout so if you just see attack of grass type moves on all of them that's a keeper that's going to be the pokemon that you want now getting bell sprout actually going to be interesting bell sprout cannot be found even though it's a grass type pokemon it can be not it can't be found in the grass recipe and it can't be found in the poison recipe despite being of those typings and that's because of how these recipes end up playing out that you can only make good recipes as the bottom tier for both the poison and the grass but bell sprout is registered as a basic pokemon so you need a normal recipe to get uh, bell sprout which means it can only be found through the yellow curry a la cube and that's going to be kind of difficult and strange. Also, another thing about poison, like, say if you're going for the uh, Bulbasaur, because Bulbasaur, 
while still like while not the best Pokemon, it's still pretty viable for this. So depending on which Pokemon you're going for, which one you'd prefer to have your team, or just through the story. That if you actually can like obtain a Bulbasaur that's good through the story, knowing that Vine Whip is powerful is also something to keep in mind. But the thing is with Poison and Grass also requires one of these. You need a Rainbow Matter to actually make the best recipe. So it could be a lot more difficult to actually get the perfect Bulbasaur. 80% chance on Grass, 50% chance on the Poison recipe compared to just YOLOing a yellow on the Bell Spray. Out, but that's going to drain you of pretty much all of your yellow ingredients and that's what we're going to hop back over into pokemon quest kind of show you guys how to do the recipes even though it's not too difficult because it's just the same thing over and over again so yeah you just make the yellow which means four apricorns and then it has to be normal so you can't use any filler you just put in one mushroom one fossil one blockberry and then you're set so that's going to be how you go and set up that yellow curry now if you want to reduce the potential burden of having the yellow curry kind of drain you of all your resources it depends on what you want to do right now i'm just kind of farming happenstance island just because like i'm not really doing it for the resources as much as trying to lower my high score as much as possible but if you're actually trying to do some grinding well then all you have to do is head on over to pincushion plain it's going to be easier which means even if you're not the position of farming the happenstance island boss you can still get a lot of yellow ingredients that way and then the venusaur planter the uh, Jolteon, Cushion, you're going to need all of those, and then that's going to give you the most chance of getting yellow. But as you can see right there, we just we just got sh just showered in yellow ingredients. I would prefer the Apricorn over the Honey. Game's just going to do RNG things to me. Also, uh, depending on your team, you might clear it sooner or faster. So I do have the Hydro Pump set up right now. I'm just going to be, like, wasting a lot of moves. But... You can just take uh, any team and really just kind of clear through Pincushion Plane once you've made it to the end game. So it's not going to take too long to farm and get a lot of Apricorns. So now let's actually go get a fairly powerful, like, Victory Bell, Wimpin Bell, and just see how that damage rolls and if it's something that's just, like, absolutely insane, like people are claiming. Because when I first picked up the Hydro Pump, my jaw slammed to the floor. I was like, wow, this is nuts. Will I get the same experience from the Vine Whip? Let's find out. Okay, I am kind of back, and this actually sucks a lot more than I expected it to, because on paper, you look at it, you're thinking, cool, this is going to be great, it's going to be easy, but the biggest problem is, Serebii has misreported the moves that Weeping Bell actually learns, so it's pretty much the same as Victory Bell, I actually added like a little bit of an annotation earlier on in the video, so it kind of means that like Bulbasaur becomes the most reliable one, but it's hard to kind of get the right things on Bulbasaur. I don't know if it's because of natural tankiness, like I haven't checked on this, and I don't know if people have done a lot of research but because Bulbasaur has a higher hit point stat than attack or at least his late evolution does I think you end up with more hit point slots than you do with attack so it's harder to roll for a perfect Bulbasaur even though it would be easier on the fine whip now the, bi the biggest problem about this is that both the sludge soup and the uh, grass recipe they take rainbow matter so out of out of 200 hours of gameplay i'm just dumping all of my rainbow matter that i've made throughout like almost the entirety of the game to end up with almost nothing uh, i also didn't have enough resources to make all the uh, veggie smoothies so that sludge soup got me a ghastly instead which is, which is pretty cool i'm all right with getting a ghastly and then the bulbasaur i'm going for this now because i think bulbasaur is the better slash best option and you still have a decent chance with the very good actually that would be good, except I didn't get one move. I got two moves instead, but since it can get the Vine Whip, it's easier to get the Vine Whip on Bulbasaur, and then you're good to go, because I just failed, like, 20 rerolls on my Wimpin' Bell and my Victory Bell just to try to get it something to use for this video, and it ended up failing pretty hard. And also, like, vi we are not, uh, just getting Bellsprout in general is also kind of a nightmare so if we if we go to the recipes over here we can kind of i've already talked about why but i mean 80 percent on the bulbasaur that's just great and even a one in four chance not using rainbow matter is a lot better than what we have with the bell sprout the, again the bell sprout being like 12 like no we're not yeah we're, we're looking for yellow so bell, bell sprout being 12 percent while using 80 of your apricorns is tricky and it also kind of shows like this could work okay guys the, the way that Vine Whip can work is if you're farming for Staryu. Because one thing I kind of like, it, that's like the, just, just the crazy thing about this game. That so much new is being discovered and test about the game is that you're going to make a lot of screw-ups. You're going to get rid of things that you wish you never got rid of as you mo learn more about bingo bonuses. And like, you know, that desperate 
getting rid of one of your decent to strong Pokemon that you're not paying a lot of attention to to try to get a good move slot or good level up or something in a desperate situation, well, that's actually going to hurt you in the long run because by making the yellow food, I've actually gotten 14 Bell Sprouts, but I didn't check them because I'm like, oh, Bell Sprout isn't worthless. You know, Staryu number one, everything's funneling into the Staryu, or like I, I use like the Bell Sprouts just to get a Victory Bell level 100 just so I had a level 100 Victory Bell for the Living Dex or something. But uh, yeah, I also ended up with Shiny. Unfortunately, the Shiny doesn't really have that that great. So I could have gotten the right Bell Sprout, but I rerolled it instead of checking on it because I didn't know that Vine Whip was viable. So if you're going for Staryu and you're resorting to using the yellow because you're out of food, you know, I ran out of Blockberries. So I was ending up making yellow uh, food while I was saving up Blockberries again to try to get the Bell Sprout. So you just kind of have to mix everything and pray. But it seems like the Bulbasaur is going to be the more reliable one. And if you're making the uh, recipes, you know, it hurts using Rainbow Matter when, again, I I've, I've dumped through, like, 80% of the Rainbow Matter that I've earned in the entirety of the game for, for this, well, not 80%, but, I mean, you know, I've earned a lot, and now they're, they're going away in an instant like that. Also, it takes longer to cook these, so it's got, like, 25% chance to get a Bell Sprout if we're doubling it out of 8 compared to 4, compared to the 80% for 1, or 26.67 for 2 on the Very Good. Very Good, not going to cost the Rainbow Matter. It's going to still take quite a bit of time. It's... It's... Crazy, but Bulbasaur I think is worth it in its own special way because when you break down the Bulbasaur It's actually going to be I think 800 points less so like 10% weaker and as we've seen with Starmie and Staryu That 10% doesn't really matter if you're still doing if you're still KOing the bosses in one cycle of a move set That extra 10% mostly just helps against legendary birds and if you're just playing for RNG anyways Then you're not really going to feel that as well so that's kind of my summary. I'm going to make some very good, actually I need to look up that recipe again because I really wasn't paying attention. So there's actually quite a few recipes depending on what you have. Still going to use up a lot of apricorns, but not as much. So one, you know, you go one, two, and then you can throw in some reds and you're good to go. It looks like it takes anything but the mushrooms for that very good recipe. So something that's not too hard to me. Yeah, okay, so you use three big roots and then you don't use any mushrooms or use two apricorns and then you use the ball mushroom. So let's go, for example, depending on what you have. Actually, it looks like I'm I'm good to go. So I have more than enough uh, stuff right here so I can go one, two, three. And this is gonna run out not really super soon, but then I can balance it around and I can make a couple of these and not really feel too much. And then that could give me a Bulbasaur, which could be a lot quicker. So it's again, it's RNG, you know, if you get really lucky and then you get, you know, the um, Vine Whip on the Weeping Bell first or second try, then it's not going to be as bad as whiffing 10 tries for like I have and then just not having a usable Pokemon at all because now it takes an entire Victory Bell. So it's hard enough to get a, it's hard enough to get a Weeping Bell and then you need a Victory Bell every time you want to reroll the move. That's tricky. <laughs> That's not good. So um, it's, it's becoming a lot harder than I thought. Now compared to getting Starmie, Staryu is still taking quite a lot of time. Uh, it doesn't take Rainbow Matter, and it actually takes a lot less time because it's only four each. But you are dealing with a riskier Pokemon that can go just as bad. So I say it's roughly the same, which means whenever you have resources for the Weepin Bell slash the Bulbasaur, you could go for that since Bulbasaur is just straight up stronger than Venusaur. Or if you have resources for the... Um, for the star you star me, you can always just make that recipe whenever you want and you're good to go. So it's kind of like just trading off and having this knowledge. I think if I had this knowledge, you know, when I started cooking for late game like a week or two weeks ago, I would have maybe utilized my resources better and then I'd have a better, a, a great star me and a great weeping bell or something like that instead of squandering everything along the way. And really, that's the justification of this being a 15 minute plus video because you know there's always going to be those troll comments of people saying like, oh, this is clickbait, you waited till the last minute of the video to show us what the video is about, or oh, it took you 15 minutes to say what could happen in 3 minutes. Uh, okay, if you want to be an idiot like that and you want to stay ignorant, go waste 8 hours of your life learning what you could have learned in 15 minutes of this video because that's, that's really what it's mostly about is that... It, on paper it seems easy, but you're going to make mistakes, you're going to reroll things, and now I don't even have, like, a good team. I just want to see what the Vine Whip does, because I, I just, I, it took eight hours. It took 
all day of just playing this eight hours of Pokemon Quest gameplay to not even have something serviceable, but that could have been reduced had I known this knowledge beforehand. So the idea is when you finally get the Vine Whip on a per perfect Pokemon, you want one Scatter Shot and then you want two Whack Whack Stones, and that's just going to do insane amounts of damage. Now you also, like I said, you want like eight Power Stones or like eight Offensive Stones, one Defensive Stone. I only have like three and four, so we're just going to do the math, you know. Multiply this by like 2.5 and then multiply this by like 2. So we have, I think, 4,000 attack on this guy. Yeah, so that's going to be the 8600 that you can expect to find on a Pokemon that has 8 offensive stones. These guys do have the plus 20% damage boost, so it's really just going to be, yeah, double what damage we see on the Bulbasaur, and then use that to draw conclusions. If we can half-shot waves with this, that'd be pretty cool. I don't even think I have hit healing, so I don't think we're surviving, especially with a 24,000 power level, but maybe we'll be surprised. You know, maybe we could see some pretty nutty results with this, and then that kind of shows uh, Vine Whip. And, and until then, we're just going to like wait to see what the leaderboards are because everything I've seen on the Pokemon Quest um, Discord is that it's not as good as Hydro Pump in its current state with what people are doing. Well, we're actually getting like those crits and stuff with it. And yeah, like, see, like, we're hitting those Pokemon for a lot of damage, and the cooldown comes back faster than the Hydro Pump as well, and there's just, like, a lot of damage inside. Also, I guess the multi-hit instances, that's, I'm just going to reset every time we get wiped. Just kind of, like, draw slower conclusions, because we don't have the hit healing. I didn't want to, like, waste all, like, I didn't want to reshuffle my stones just for, like, a four-minute conclusion at the end of the video or something. But, I mean, that was hurting. Like, Gyarados would have been gone after that first burst. So, instead of, like, using one Hydro Pump to clear the wave, we're just kind of, like, splitting up the Vine Whips and just, like, popping things really quick on a shorter cooldown. And, but what I've seen on the uh, Pokemon Quest uh, Discord is that it's not as strong as the Hydro Pump, but it's very close. And I think it's actually easier to get a Vine Whip team compared to a Hydro Pump team if you were doing everything right to begin with. But, I mean, it stacks a lot of damage. And it's really quick. I think that's the thing. Like, the Hydro Pump actually has a wind-up to it. So, if we're doing a double Whack Whack um, Hydro Pump, or no, it's a single Whack Whack Hydro Pump with the other stuff going on for it, that's actually comparable to the double Whack Whack Vine Whip in cooldown and how fast you're clearing things out. I mean, look at that. These are some of the most unoptimized Pokemon actually getting reasonable... I, I, I Even then, that was me. That was a complete failure on my part because I let the... Um, the bulk up expire since I'm not used to doing manual because like you have to manual when you're set up like this but I mean that's not looking bad like by we should have gotten completely wiped out entirely by this but I mean the damage comes through it's really nice also I've heard that uh Weepin Bell it could be worse than the Bulbasaur because Bulbasaur is a smaller sprite so Bulbasaur being this melee on a small sprite means you're actually hitting both instances of the Vine Whip like that and you're doing good hits inside of it adding another Whack Whack Stone and then connecting with multiple Pokemon does show that we have, I think it's also another aspect of RNG, that if both Pokemon are focused on your Bulbasaur, or if your Bulbasaur being smaller, melee-driven Pokemon, they're actually going to have more reliable hits for damage than you're going to find from the uh, Starmie, which means if you get, like, God RNG, it seems like you could maybe clear faster on much more insane RNG than, it, than what uh, people are doing right now with the Hydro Pump, because, yeah, then you're hitting multiple Pokemon with multiple instances stacking like that. But, I mean, that's respectable. That's, that's four, yeah, that's like two-shotting all of the legendary birds if they, if they do line up right. And that actually shows that you don't want the Mewtwo. That when you're running Vine Whip, you actually want to have the, and if I was playing better, and if I wasn't dropping bulk ups, we had some hit healing, we could actually beat the final boss with 30, or not 30, with like 22,000 power level. So that does, does show the strength in this, and you don't want a, a ranged Pokemon, you want melee, you want to get him a champ in here, because, yeah, look at that, like, we just came up and we almost popped that, um, Articuno. It does make, like, maybe in the future we'll have a perfect Vine Whip team, but I just spent all of my resources and a full day, and think about it, the average player doesn't play eight, eight hours a day, this is going to be three days of play just to not have the right team, to not get the right Pokemon. But uh, if you have Machamp in there, then everything's going to be crowded. Everyone's going to be stacked on top of each other. And that's where that Vine Whip is really going to shine. So, I, I just, just going off the results from the Discord, Hydro Pump is better. But there's people that are, like, really holding out on that Vine Whip. It'd be pretty crazy to see, like, you know, the Happenstance Island boss world record suddenly get taken over by, like, the God Run and then being uncontestable, except for maybe another Vine Whip kind of Pokemon. So that's it. Uh, it just seems that, you know, the second best offensive move, hands down, is the Vine Whip. 
and that's that's kind of it like yeah so we're, we're looking at bulk up vine whip and hydro pump being the holy trinity maybe some kind of combo inside of that as well that also what you want to do is maybe have one vine whip pokemon that way you're getting the melee shots in that clean up off of a massive hydro pump or something and then that could maybe be some kind of hybrid that makes the team stronger and stuff like that so there we go guys that's your breakdown of the vine whip um i hope to have a better video of it i can't even say soon i hope to have a better video it of it at some point in my life but we're, we're going to see what happens just make sure all your pokemon are valuable in some way if they're in the right realm you know i've re-rolled potentially really good machops just for the sake of it re-rolled -re really good vine whip pokemon just for the sake of it without knowing that they were actually the one to invest in the entire time so if you guys enjoy the video hope you all have a nice day thank you also leave a like to you know crowd out the hate promote this video as much as possible show people the truth and the power of vine whip and then we're going to see how it scales from there so you guys enjoy the video hope you all have a nice day thank you very much for watching and just putting Starry back in yeah